We're together again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Somebody had me there. All right, Brother Marco. <laughs> In one accord. I won't go any further than that, though. Praise God. Well, it's a, it's a blessing to be together again. And as we continue uh, our Wednesday study through the book of Luke, um, we're going to open our Bibles to chapter 1. As Brother Marco shared, we're waiting for the day when we don't have to have as these concerns and worries about all this sanitizing and these different things that are going on. And we're getting closer and closer. Even today was uh, the shift to yellow tear for whatever that <laughs> calls for. <laughs> I don't feel any different. I don't know if you feel any different. <laughs> I didn't feel any different at orange or red, but <laughs> praise God, we're going the right direction. Uh, uh, the, the cases are really going down low. They just said uh, for the last few days in a row, even L.A. County um, has been at zero uh, deaths from COVID. Um, that's including all the uh, nursing homes and those who have been afflicted with so many other um, diseases and, uh, and sicknesses. And then COVID being the kind of the pendulum that uh, that swings in the in the wrong direction. But we're thankful that God is moving, that we're we're going forward in the right way, and we uh, want to continue to gather and uh, and just be excited about being together. Amen. Um, as we shared last Wednesday, uh, Luke being uh, uh, one of the I don't want to say fullest gospels, but it has a a, a lot of a lot more uh, in-depth information than maybe some of the other synopt uh, synoptic uh, gospels, meaning just of the same viewpoint. So um, we broke it down last week into four pieces just because chapter one is one of the longest chapters with uh, 80 verses in it. So we broke it down last week into four pieces, uh, one being unbelief, and we covered that last week. Then there's faith joy and praise so tonight lord willing we'll be able to get through faith and joy and then we'll we'll praise next week <laughs> we praise every time we gather but we'll lord willing go through uh praise uh next week so as you open your bibles to chapter one we're going to look at verse 26 And that's where we ended last week because we were, we went through the first 25 verses and it was in regards to Zacharias meeting an angel in the temple, uh, the angel speaking to him, the angel Gabriel sharing with him that he was going to have a child, not real happy with Zacharias' response. Zachariah was left mute, so he's unable to speak, so he's still in that condition because uh, John the Baptist has not been born yet, so we're still going through that portion. So um, as we begin, we'll go through, we'll start at verse 26. Praise God. The Word of God says in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Verse 30. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and the son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Verse 33, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. 
Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, for it is true. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, Lord. And even as, Father, your word tells us where two or more gathered in your name, you are in the midst, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would continue to move, Father, through this time of the word as it moved through even our time of worship, that you would minister to the hearts who are here, the hearts who are at home. And, Father, give us a hunger for your understanding, Lord. Give us growth in your word. Cause us to be rooted deep so that we can grow strong in you. We just give you all thanks, all honor, and all praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise God. Well, um, many of us have read these verses before, and that kind of can be a double-edged sword because we go, yeah, yeah, we, we already know. <laughs> yeah, we know that uh, John the Baptist was born, and then Jesus was born, and an angel came, and we just kind of, Pass through it, and yeah, I, I saw the play. <laughs> I, 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 I'm aware of how it works, and, and that uh, Jesus had came, and that's Christmas, and we all get presents, and when we start seeing those things, and it becomes a tradition and a routine. And as we've gone through the first portion of, of Luke, and I'm truly getting a little more in depth in this particular chapter because the foundation that it really needs to be for the rest of the book. Because understanding the fact that Jesus came, the miracle of leaving heaven to come fulfill prophecy, be born of a virgin, so that he would stand in our place and be crucified on a cross and die for our sins. And rise again on the third day. So there's, there's so much that, that is, is going on at this point. Uh, we've already gone through, like I said, through uh, Zacharias and, uh, and, his, and his wife, uh, Elizabeth, and what had been going on with them. And now the angel has shifted gears, the angel Gabriel, and he's going to see a young girl. It says in verse 26, It says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. See, now we can contrast that with what we read last week. We had an angel named Gabriel. He went to Jerusalem, the holy city. He went to a priest in the temple and he spoke to this priest and shared about the birth this miracle birth of John John the Baptist again this was a natural childbirth this was not uh, a virgin birth like what we're talking about uh, today but we just see the difference now the angel has come to a city called Nazareth, which the Jews really looked down on. They saw it as a, as a place that was unclean because there was so much uh, juve, uh, juvenile. <laughs> Gentile is the word I was looking for. Well, they might have been juvenile Gentiles, but. <laughs> but the Gentile interaction made them believe that it was unclean because they were above the Gentile, being religious Jews. They didn't want to be contaminated. Uh, e even as, as, as we know, uh, uh, Nathaniel told Philip in John chapter 1, what good thing could come from Nazareth? Could anything good come from Nazareth? That's how much they looked down on this city. So we see a complete difference. We see not a priest, but... A young virgin girl. We know that that they were poor because when they went to the temple, they offered the lower sacrifice. They they didn't have the finances. 
God sent this same angel in both places. We see God moving wherever his people are calling for him. Wherever God is going to minister to his people, he goes to them. He ministers to us where we are. So in seeing that, that slight picture of the difference of the angel, uh, we see that it says that she was betrothed to a man. And betrothed, we know, has a few different meanings. People think of it as one thing or another thing. I, I want to be a little specific so we can understand uh, perfectly what it's saying. Uh, Ju uh, Jewish weddings back then had a three-stage process, if you will. The first was engagement, which is a formal agreement made by the fathers. So the fathers had to have the discussion. How many goats am I getting for my daughter? Or Nathan still owes me a couple. <laughs> how, how many, how, how much do I have to, to pay? Or all these, all these get this, uh, this uh, negotiation hammered out. Okay, so that's the engagement portion. The second portion is to be betrothed, which is actually a ceremony where uh, mutual promises are made. If, oh, let me continue. And then the third portion is marriage, which takes place around a year later when the bridegroom comes back unannounced and he shows up to retrieve his bride. But when someone is betrothed, they're already placed aside. There's already been a ceremony done to, to separate someone from being betrothed. There has to be an actual divorce. That's how much it is. It's not just like, oh, I promised. I said, yeah, I said I do, but I changed my mind. No, this was actually a part of the ceremony. So for her to be betrothed to this man was very serious to be to, to, to Joseph. So it was very serious. And it says that he was of the, of the house of David. Uh, many think that Mary was in the area of 15 to 16 years old. Some think as young as 12, but it's, it's more consistent around the 15 to 16 uh, age group. But she was very mature for her age because we see her love for God. We see her knowledge of God's word. And as we go a little further into the chapter, you'll see that. But she truly had an understanding of God's word. It, it wasn't an accident that God picked out of every young virgin walking the face of the earth at that time that he had chose Mary. Um, Mary knew Elijah, uh, Elijah, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel, God with us. She knew Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. She knew these things. So when the angel came and shared these things with her, she had fear, it says. She was, she, she, because she knew what it entailed. So as we continue to read, verse 28, and having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice. He called her highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Praise God. He gave her three words of encouragement. You are, he told her to rejoice because you're highly favored. The Lord is with you. And blessed are you among women. See, those three pieces can identify with a believer. Those who have given their life to the Lord should rejoice. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And you are blessed among brethren. But there is a fine line when, you be, when, you come, when it comes to religion. Because people have a tendency to look at Mary in one of two ways. They either hold her up to the point a higher reverence than Jesus or they look down on her because they feel that they're afraid that it might look as if they are lifting her up and not focusing on Jesus. Both are incorrect. 
because she should truly be lifted up. She was chosen. But it doesn't say, it says, you are blessed, uh, uh, it says, blessed are you above all women. No, it doesn't say that. It says among, equal. She wasn't lifted up above anyone else. She was a tremendous tool in God's hand and she was open to be used in obedience because of her faithfulness. And this, again, is at such a young age. So it says in verse 29, But when she saw him, she was troubled at his sayings and considered what manner of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. And you notice the son is a capital S, meaning the son. And he and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Praise God. We might read that and think, what's the difference between Zechariah last week. Zechariah last week said, how can it be that I'm going to have a child? I'm old and my wife is advanced in age. We can't do this. He started giving all the reasons and excuses for his unbelief, pointing at himself. But see, that's not what Mary was doing. Mary knew the scriptures. Mary knew the word of God. She was just asking, how is this going to take place? This was informational. She wanted to know how this was going to happen. And she got a completely different response from Gabriel than Zechariah did. What did Zechariah hear? He heard Gabriel say, don't you know who I am? (laughs) Don't you know where I come from? I am Gabriel, the angel who stands in the presence of God. You're doubting me. We know that we read that, that God, it says, Gabriel was sent by God in verse 26 to this city. We know God's hand is upon this whole thing. And and Mary responds in verse 34, saying to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? Verse 35, And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. See, the, 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 the term overshadow you uh, means to cover with a cloud. It's the same Greek word that, uh, that uh, in the Old Testament, uh, the Hebrew word was for the Shekinah glory or the cloud that, that carried God's God's glory. And that was in Exodus. But it's also the same word that is used uh, at, the, at the Mount of Transfiguration. When the presence of God came and the cloud came down upon them. It's the presence of God that came down upon them. And that's exactly what happened to Mary. There's some that have twisted and backward religions that try to attack the word of God, the true word of God, and they try to twist this into something vulgar. But the word of God says, the shadow or the cloud came down upon her, and she was with child. And this is truly God's presence. It says, and the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Keep your finger in Luke and turn to John chapter 5. Or you can cheat and just look up here. (laughs) John chapter 5, verse 18. John chapter 5, verse 18 says, Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, and him being Jesus, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. 
That's exactly what was being said in Luke chapter 1. That God in the flesh had come. That God in the flesh was going to be born of this virgin. So when, when it says the Son of God, it is speaking of God. We have to understand the truth of the Word of God because people are trying to dilute and water down the Word of God to a point to where they say, Jesus never said he was God. He said it. It's in the Word of God. We're seeing it in the beginning before his birth. The angel had said it. He said, this is who it's going to be. The reason they wanted to kill him, the Jews said it. The religious leaders said it. They wanted to kill him because he said he was equal to God. He was God. Even in their own words. But people will try to take away from the word of God. And that's truly why, as a church, we, we go through different books. And even in the, in the teachings that, that we aren't going from uh, chapter 1 to the last chapter of any book, we still are doing a teaching with the true word of God. We're not standing upon topical teaching where we can grab a scripture from here and a scripture from there and a scripture from there and all of a sudden say, this is the word and this is what we believe. We want to make sure that it's deep-rooted in what we're teaching. It's the word of God that's going to stay with us that as we grow in the things of God, we can depend on it, we can stand upon it. And going through books like this, it's super important because it gives us the foundation we have to understand the importance. Without this, salvation is impossible. And we start to get to the modern day church where it's becoming, you just need to be a good person. You just need to show love and be compliant and be open to everyone and show unity. And then that's how we all get along and that's how we all go to heaven. That is contrary to the word of God. This is how we go. We make it to heaven by the gift of grace that was given to us by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we receive that gift and we walk in that gift. There is nothing else that can get us to heaven. But, but everyone has a different angle on everything else and the churches are starting to bring it in and are starting to dilute. And, and I say it because the churches that are doing it are the ones that are the largest churches in our, in our, in our, in our country. And it's the churches that are some of the most powerful uh, preachers that are the most well-known, that are, that are sharing these things. And when our country that's unsaved looks at the church and they say, well, that's who the church is. It's those people that are saying that. They believe that that's what the true church is, is, is sharing. And, and that's why we have to truly understand that we cannot be deluded in the word of God. We need to stand upon the truth of the word of God. And that's what we're and that's that's what we receive every time we get in the word. Every time we open this Bible, that's what we we receive. So it says that the holy one and this is in verse 35. It says that the holy one who is to be born will be called the son of God. Praise God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, verse 36, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. Praise God. So Mary, in being given this honor, first, even like we said last week, just the fact to have an angel standing before you, giving you direction of what God is calling you to do. Uh, that's got to be something that is just, right, we can't picture. I know I can't. We can't fathom that. But in giving her this instruction, he says, and also, this is almost a, a, uh, uh, another sign for you to understand that what I'm telling you is true. What I'm telling you is going to happen. That Elizabeth, your relative, well, it is, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now her sixth month. Okay, now verse 38 says, Then Mary said, and this was her response to everything. The, the, the angel had shared all that was needed. She asked one question, how is it going to happen? 
He says, the Shekinah glory of God will cover you and will make this come to pass. And even your relative in her old age who was called barren is going to be a, a, a sign that these things will come to pass. And, and her response was this, verse 38. And Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord. And it has an exclamation point. That's saying it with boldness. It says, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Praise God. What a different response. Now when you compare that to Zechariah. She said, all these things are going to happen? Again, she's betrothed. She's already taken. But now she's going to have a child. So how is this going to work? Without a doubt, without a concern, without a worry, Mary says, let this be to me according to your word. Not what about when I go home and I have a big panza and they start looking at me funny. What about when Joseph sees me and says, hey, wait a minute here. <laughs> she didn't have a concern or a question about any of that. She said, your servant, your maidservant, behold your maidservant. You tell me, I am your servant. And that's what she did. It says so that at the angel departed from her. Verse 39. And, and this is the portion of the, the, the faithfulness of Mary is shown throughout everything we've just read. And that was the, 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 the second portion of this chapter on faith. And now we, we turn to joy. And joy, the first person that we look at in joy is the joy of Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, we, we remember, is Zach, uh, Zacharias' wife. So it says, verse 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to the city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. So she didn't waste any time. She said, the angel said, this, is, is going, this has already happened. She's with child. She said, with haste, let's go check that out. <laughs> I want to go find out what's going on. And she goes, in verse 41 it says, And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leapt in her, leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. Because she started to say things that we're about to read that she had no idea about. She would have had no knowledge of these things that she's about to say. Verse 42. And this is Elizabeth speaking. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. See, she already knew. How did she know that? Because it was the Holy Spirit within her that was speaking. The Holy Spirit within her is what gave her the understanding of what was going on. And her key word is blessed. She continues to say, blessed. Blessed are you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb that your child. Verse 43. But why is this granted to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. See, she even knew. She said, that was my Lord that you're having. That is the Savior. That is the Messiah that you're giving birth to. She knew these things. Nobody came and told her. Mary had just found these things out and she traveled there. But the Holy Spirit came upon her and gave her the understanding. It says in verse 44, For indeed, as soon as the voice as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Praise God. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of the things which were told to her from the Lord. She gave her an encouragement. The Holy Spirit encouraged her. 
said, everything you heard from the Lord is going to happen. Blessed are you. See, she had no grounds to encourage her on her own. She didn't know any of these things. But God was using her and filled her with the Holy Spirit to encourage, to encourage Mary. And she had joy. And she was filled with the Holy Spirit. That was the first joy. The second joy is back in 41. It says, as it happened when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary, that the babe leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So the child was filled with the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist in the womb was filled with the Holy Spirit. This was prophecy. Was it verse 15? I think it's 15. Verse 15, the same chapter, it says, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and this is speaking of John the Baptist, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And this is exactly what came to pass. This is just a prophecy being fulfilled. All these things are falling in line perfectly. God's hand is moving in the midst of all of this. And even within the womb, and, and even when we mentioned this before, when people start talking about abortion, and they start talking about time frames, and saying that a child is at a certain time frame and month is not considered a child, and they are making laws and putting themselves in the place of God. These, this word alone is telling us that a child within the womb, you know, even in the same likeness with our children. I don't know uh, about, uh, about any of you or how, how recent your last child was or grandchild even, but they say when you talk to the baby, they can hear you. You can have a conversation with the baby and they recognize the voice. I know that with my youngest granddaughter because she recognizes her, her dad's voice. And even when she was just born, she would hear the voice of her mother and her father and it would catch her attention. She, would, she knew who they were. God has made us in a way that is amazing. And God has given us this gift of life and in seeing these things, we have to understand that man may have their version to make things convenient, but God is in control. And, and seeing that the Holy Spirit even was in, within this child. It wasn't just that there was a child born. It wasn't just that that child was going to come and be born shortly. It was the fact that even God's Holy Spirit filled that child. And it was talked about before. The angel even talked about it. The angel Gabriel. So this child was filled with joy. That was the second, that was the second person filled with joy in, in this chapter. And the third is Mary herself. In verse 46, it says, And Mary said, and I'm not sure if, if your Bible has the same uh, chapter uh, uh, breaks or or not chapter breaks, but uh, paragraph breaks. It says the song of Mary. It says, and Mary said, let's go back to 44, 45, I'm sorry. It says, blessed is she who believes for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told to her from the Lord. These things were going to come to pass. And Mary's response to that and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in the God of my Savior. Praise God. You know, there's what she's, what she's sharing in this. There's, there's, there's so much in this portion that she shares here. One thing that she's sharing is that we are three parts. We are Spirit, soul, and body. Because she said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in, 
in God my Savior. You know, soul, the Greek word soul is suke. Suke means mind. Meaning the mind, meaning our, 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 our mental understanding. And spirit, the Greek word for spirit is pneuma. Meaning breath or spirit. That's why it even said that Jesus breathed upon the apostles. He breathed upon them and the Holy Spirit came upon them. So we have a soul, a body, and a spirit. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. We want each of those to be blameless. And I remember this, and I had read this before and I remember we were at the R Ranch for a men's retreat and I remember it was Brother Jose who was standing behind the pulpit and he said spirit, soul, and body it even gives you the order and I said I've read that so many times and I never thought of that <laughs> the body being last the least important so it says spirit, soul, and body because whichever one the body is going to pay attention to is the one that's going to grow stronger. If that body is going to pay attention to the soul and think of what this mind wants and the direction that this mind is thinking and going as opposed to the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit that leads us, who tells us, fast, so you keep this body under control. Tell this body you're not in charge. You gotta, you gotta keep, you gotta keep it under wraps. There, you let this body get carried away, and all it does is care about it. And that's not just me. I know it's everybody else as well. That's how our flesh is made. It's always hungry to feed self. So Mary is sharing that my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in the God of my Savior. And then she goes through. Eight times, I believe, he has. Verse 48. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Verse 49. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Verse 52. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. 53. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Praise God. The humbleness of Mary in sharing everything that God had done. All her focus and everything she pointed to was what God had done. He has, he has, he has. Everything he put in place, he did by his strength, by his doing. Also, in, in these verses that we just read, there is at least 12 other references to the Old Testament through either Psalms or Old Testament scriptures that Mary is referencing. That's how well she knew the word of God. In the things she's sharing, she's using the Old Testament scriptures and Psalms to glorify God. And in everything, she pointed to him. She gave him all the glory. That, that to me, is someone that, is, that should be honored, should be held in a high esteem. God chose her. She was chosen of God to be used as this tool, this instrument. 
But even Jesus himself, when she came with her other children to see Jesus, and Jesus said, who is my mother and who is my brother? When they said, your mother and your brothers are outside, they want to see you. He said, who is my mother and who is my brother? He said, you, the brethren, are my mother and my brothers. You're the ones that I care about. We serve a God who loves us, who's done these things for us. In verse 56, it says, And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. Mary was rejoicing in the God of her Savior, she said. She said, rejoicing in God, my Savior. She was rejoicing in the fact that that her Savior was going to be born. Salvation was coming through Jesus Christ. Even when Elizabeth said that the mother of my Lord, how am I, that my, the mother of my Lord should come, they were already pointing out the fact that Jesus was this child, the Messiah. We as believers have to recognize that fact. And we live that. Every day of our life, knowing that that is a biblical truth that cannot be shaken. Right now, you'll hear people talk about a virgin birth. They say, yeah, you know, we know what the Bible says. You know, the Bible said that there was a, a, a flood and that uh, every animal by twos got on this boat. And you know what? That's not physically possible. So there's certain things that were they took liberties with and the thing that said that is a lie from the pit the word of god is truth there is not an area of the word of god the perfect word of god the 66 books by the over 40 different authors that fit together perfectly like a puzzle guided by the holy spirit of god is 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 perfection and if we think that we as men can decide what doesn't go in there and what does go in there, we have put ourselves in the place of God. And that's what's going on in the day we live in. It's becoming more convenient to back away from the truths of God. And we even had talked about that even when Brother Regis shared on Sunday and, 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 and even in, in the closing how we understand how so many popular so-called Christian leaders are saying they're, 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 playing the, they're playing the dumb card. They're playing the I don't know. You know, it, you read and you tell me, you find out what it says in there. You, you look in the word of God and give me understanding. You have to give me uh, an area where, where I have grace to, to be able to make the wrong decisions and if you are leading and you're in a position of a leader or a pastor and you are not standing on the word of God, I feel, I feel sorry for you on the day of judgment. You are held at a higher standard and it brings fear to my heart that men are doing that. But we are blessed to have the true word of God. We are blessed to have men and women who love the Lord who stand strong on the word and who have continued without wavering. The thing that always blesses my heart so much, and I don't want to get too far off base because I'm closing here with this, is it blesses my heart so much when people that haven't been in our midst for a long time come back and visit. Or if they've moved out of town and they come back and visit and they see the same faces. And they say, praise God, it's good to see you again. You guys are still serving God here. I say, yeah, this is where God placed us. If God calls us to be somewhere else, we're going to go where God calls us. But this is where God has called us. And we're faithful to go forward and to stand together and be used by God. And so many people are blown away by that. Because churches are so quickly, they roll over and roll over and roll over with different people coming in and out. But God has given us stability. We 
as a body are blessed. Look around you, you're blessed. We have people, men of God and women of God, that we can look to as examples and be strengthened. So in, in closing this word, we've got, we're going to be going into uh, next week praise, and that will finish up the first chapter. And like I say, chapter one being so many verses, it can become a little tedious. But I, 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 I pray you stay engaged, stay locked into the word of God, and see what God has for you. And as we continue to go, and, and as, as everything starts to roll a little faster and faster, and it all starts to f- fit together, and these are not things that we don't know. This is not the first time we've gone through uh, Luke, or we've ever read the book of Luke uh, as believers. But as God places it together, it brings us a, a strength and an encouragement that, that we all need. Amen? So praise God. So with that, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to call the musicians forward. And we see that Mary went home clearly pregnant. But she trusted God to go before her, to cover her, to keep her safe. We trust in God in the same manner. And the things we go through, we must trust God. We can say we trust God, but we have to show it in our actions. We have to be willing to put things in God's hands and say, Lord, we know that you have this all under control. That God, you are going to have your way and that you are going to complete what you started. And for, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, says, be confident of this very thing that he, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Don't worry if you feel weak. Don't worry if you feel weary. Just press in. God is waiting for you. He desires to minister to you. Praise God. Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, for this true, Lord. And Father, even as we have this time of prayer, we ask that, Father, you would, Father, minister to those who need a touch from you, Lord, whether they're at home or here in this building. Father, you move in a mighty way, Lord. You encourage hearts, Lord, that are weary, that are tired, knowing, Father, that it is not of our own strength that we serve you, but, Father, it is by the strength that you give us and that you go before us in all things. So, Father, encourage your people. Bless your people in a mighty way. Strengthen them, Lord. And, Father, just go before them, Lord. Father, this world is a dark place. Father, we can become discouraged very easily. But, Father, help us to keep our mind and our hearts set upon you. Help our eyes to be fixed on the cross of Jesus Christ, knowing that you are greater than all these things. And, Father, we will receive your love and encouragement. We just thank you give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.